Hey guys, welcome back to Mountain Murders. I'm Heather. And I'm Dylan. You are. I have been always. This has been Easter weekend. It is. This episode will be dropping Easter evening. It will. Happy Easter. Happy spring. Happy. Whatever you're into. Anything you're doing. Yeah. You're listening to episode number 80. That's crazy. Did you ever think we would be here, Dylan, with 80 episodes under our belts? No. When we first started, I definitely never thought we would do that. So 80 is a nice milestone. 20 episodes away from 100. I know. That's incredible. I feel like we have some exciting cases coming up. We do. It's going to be a great spring, summer season of mountain murders. Some different stuff. Some stuff you've never heard before, which we like to do here. And I tell you, there's only one reason we're here at 80 episodes, and that is our wonderful listeners. That is true. Without you guys, we would be nothing. We would just be two weirdos in a room talking to each other. Listening to recordings of ourselves. Which is what happens like the other 99% of the time. That's true. <laughs> Thanks to our new patrons, Amity, Justin, Chelsea, and Jessica. Because of these kind, generous folks, we're bringing you this brand new true crime tale. Thanks. Number 80, brought to you by these four lovely folks. Thanks, guys. Thanks for direct, uh, supporting us directly. It's, it's wonderful. True. Yeah, and Patreon's a great way to do that. We know right now times are tough for a lot of folks out there. Well, that makes it even more special. We understand. So the fact that you guys have taken the time to pledge some support, throw a little money our way to help keep the show going is fantastic. It really is a bright light in all this. I got to tell you, I am grateful that we've been safe and that we're healthy and that you've been able to keep working. I've been able to keep plugging along, but this self quarantine type of thing, I'm over it. You're over it. <laughs> I'm fucking over You've it. You've had enough. Yeah. I'm ready to move out. I'm ready to like move into my own apartment. Okay. And I'll come visit you like maybe once or twice a week. But yeah, I'm just ready to like live by myself. Yeah, I, I've kind of gotten that vibe from you. Yeah. Yeah, maybe I'll just go work for a week in a row. Oh, but I'm still going to be stuck here with them. Oh, yeah. You Speaking know, of them. Them? We were talking about how these damn kids are like freaking royalty. No. They are. So you're like, oh, what are you doing? They're like, I'm sitting in my room. You're like, what the hell? So they got their $800 phones and... 800 you mean more like $1,200 fucking phones. Unlimited data. Yeah. And their fat-ass clothes. Their fat-ass clothes. <laughs> Are you like fat-shaming them, or do you mean like their P-H-A-T? You know I mean P-H-A-T. You mean like their name, brand, matching, like full Adidas outfit, like the pants and the socks and the hoodie. Yes. And this is just their loungewear. That's all the stuff they're just chilling like in. Like $130 outfit is just like their chill clothes. Yeah, and they're just hanging out and shit. I mean, my around the house clothes have holes in them, bleach stains, sweat stains, t-shirts I've had for like two decades. So, yeah. Yeah, so they're little mini <laughs> celebrities. So they got built-in drivers. Yes. They have built-in um, personal shoppers. Chef. Personal chefs. Personal chefs. Yep. Um, maids. Housekeepers. Hired help. Yep. Um, laundry, security, turn down service, like you <laughs> yeah. get a fucking mint on their pillow. What the hell? And then you ask them like, Hey, do you think you can wash that one sink full of dishes there? Because we fed you for like three months straight. Yeah. <sighs> oh my God. <sighs> Jesus. Well, they're not all my dishes. Oh my God. It made me want to swing on a little kid. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to kick them. <laughs> I don't know if anyone else out there is feeling this, but yeah, I'm I'm ready to not pick up after people. No, we don't want to pick up after people. Seriously, I feel like I'm just going to take a vacation from all of this. I'm going to quarantine myself into my bedroom. Okay. I'm going to put a little sign on the door that's like, leave me the fuck alone. That doesn't go for me, right? With snacks. No, that goes for you too. I'll allow you in to sleep. Well, shit. And I'm just going to pile up in here. I'm going to watch all the trash TV that I love, like Ink Masters. That's pretty trashy. I fucking love that. I know. But you like 90 Day Fiance, so don't judge me. Well, at least that is about real people. I'm going to read. I'm going to finish my courses that I've been doing online. Oh, my God. Your college you found through the library? 
dude, I'm so excited. I hope your public library is as awesome as our public library. I know we're getting off on a little tangent here, but hey, we're, hey, it's okay. No big whoop among friends, right? Our public library is amazing. And since everything is shut down, essentially, they are offering like the entire North Carolina Digital Library. You can access that through their website, as well as you can take over 500 courses online and you can get credits. You can earn certificates and all kinds of shit. And it's like for everything you could even imagine, it's right? free. I'm taking like four creative writing types of classes. One of them is a mystery writing class. Oh, I know who's going to be the murder victim. I'm finding out how to write the great American novel. Oh, okay. Well, it's just fun. And I'm a nerd, so I love the idea of sitting here like doing schoolwork. We're just going to hide in the bedroom alone with Cadbury cream eggs and do schoolwork. And you people can leave me alone. You people. Oh, gosh. That's a loaded <laughs> statement. <laughs> and I'll even sit in here in my, my raggedy old pants, okay? I'm not even demanding I want some Adidas pants. I just want to be alone. Leave me alone. Just yeah, all right. So we'll, we'll, ma we'll make you some alone time here in a little while. <sighs> okay. Okay. Either that or you need to buy me some outdoor roller skates. Yeah, well, I've already tried plying you with alcohol. That didn't work. It didn't? No. Well, no, you drank it all. Well, I didn't drink it all. He did drink it all. All right, so what are we going to talk about today? Episode 80. Yeah. We have another serial killer case. This case, I've heard of this before, but I was reminded of this case by my bestie, Julie. Oh, yeah, you and Julie. Shout all... out to Julie. I know you're listening, girlfriend, and thanks for recommending this case. She had seen like a TV type of show or something, and she texted me like, have you heard of this guy? I had heard of him but I'd kind of forgotten about him. We're going to get a little out of our mountain murders region. Yeah, but Just it's a serial hair. It's a serial killer. We're going to go to South Carolina. Okay. Today we're talking about Larry Jean Bell. He was born in Alabama in 1948. He had three sisters and one brother. Five kids in this family. It's a pretty big family. Yeah, five kids is big enough. His family life was reportedly unstable and i didn't get a lot of information about his childhood they moved frequently and so when i say unstable they just didn't have that stability of like being in the same town for his like whole life kind of thing i mean they were moving a lot he went to several schools per year it was really hard for him he had a hard time adjusting you're the new kid trying to make friends well, that sucks. Every couple of months. Yeah, yeah. that sucks because you never do need make long-term friendships. You're always worried. And by the time you adjust and settle in and can concentrate on schoolwork, boom, you move again. So that's not good for any young person. Even as a kid, Larry was considered peculiar. He had mental illness, sometimes falling into psychotic trances. Wow. This was untreated. Of course, you know, I guess maybe if you consider the time. So he's born in 48. His childhood, he would have been a kid in the 50s, early 60s. You know, I'm not sure that people were so aware of a mental illness then. No, I, I'd say that's still, I'm going to guess, during the time where you didn't talk about it. If you, you know, the family kept it kind of a secret. Perhaps there, you know, maybe wasn't even really a doctor in town. If you're living in some small community, they maybe didn't really know how to handle it. And again, they just thought he was an oddball that maybe, you know, wasn't until even later that he was diagnosed with a problem. As a teenager, he was discovered sexually abusing female relatives. Well, that's definitely... Not very good. That's not a good thing. That's very, very, very sick. Bouncing around in the South, he attended high schools in Mississippi, South Carolina. He finally graduated and then went on to earn a certificate as an electrician. He moved to South Carolina in his early 20s, got married. He fathered a son. And then in 1970, he decided to join the Marine Corps. It was during this time as a Marine that he accidentally shot himself in the knee cleaning a gun and was given a discharge. He had only been in service for not even a year. Well, yeah, I'm going to guess they're like, yeah, this guy doesn't need to be a damn Marine. Oops, I shot myself. Once he's discharged from the Marine Corps, he moves back to South Carolina and he works for only a month as a correctional officer in the state prison system. Well, do you think he shot anybody while he was there? <laughs> 
<laughs> in the knee. I don't know. <laughs> By 1976, he finds himself divorced. He's living alone. Goes back to working as an electrician. Okay, so he's always falling back on the one thing he was able to complete. In February of 1975, 19-year-old Dale Sauls Howell, a young married mother, was walking from her apartment to a shopping center, which was located around the corner of her complex, just a few feet away. She needs to buy some laundry detergent. She walks over. She notices there's a man sitting in a green Volkswagen and she didn't think much of it until the man asked her, hey, do you want to go to Charlotte and party? Okay, that's a little weird. She tells him no, and then that's when this guy jumps out of the car, pulls a knife out, and attempts to abduct Dale. And so she's probably raising hell, right? She's screaming. She's screaming. Other shoppers witness the commotion and immediately call the police. Bell jumps in his car, starts speeding away. He's captured at an intersection down the road from the attack. Not far at all. Well, good. At the time, Bell was living in Rock Hill, South Carolina, and he was working for Eastern Airlines in Charlotte, North Carolina. He was charged with assault and battery, but ended up taking a plea deal, which gave him five years of probation. Plus, he had to agree to mental health counseling. What the hell? What kind of damn plea deal is that? That's bullshit. By 1976, he was back in court for attacking a University of South Carolina co-ed. Wow, it's almost like he didn't learn his lesson. At this time, he was facing up to 30 years for the assault, but took another plea, which ended in more probation and mental health treatment. He did spend a few months in a mental health like facility, type of facility. I can tell you during this time, he was not only working on his mental health, allegedly, he was studying on becoming a highly organized serial killer. In 1979, Bell was also convicted of harassing phone calls, and these were actually obscene phone calls. Oh, so like the heavy breathing thing? Yeah, just he would randomly call women, or he would find a woman and focus his attention on this particular woman, find out where she lived, her phone number, and then would just start calling and, you know, saying all sorts of dirty shit. So, um, he's like, oh, it's me again, Margaret. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just like, <sighs> you think it's like that? I mean, maybe, or would it you... could have been like the classic Ray Stevens, like, it's me again, Margaret. I would just go with Are it. Are you naked? No, I'm just kidding. This is very, especially some a woman who might live by herself or something. Very scary thing, you know, for someone to keep calling because they have your number. You know what I mean? They know something about you, you think. In total, he only served two years of that five-year sentence he had received for probation. So he only did two years of probation? Yes. This is ridiculous. A few months in a mental health treatment facility. Okay. But he has two assault charges. Yeah, and there, and it's not like you got in a fight in a parking lot with somebody over a parking spot. He's trying to abduct, abduct these women, or the one he was for sure, and at Knife Point. So I think that's even calling that just assault a little bit light in my book. Well, let's talk a little bit about South Carolina. Our case is going to take us to the easternmost part of the Deep South. South Carolina, or the Palmetto State, is rich in history, from colored pastel houses in Charleston to the old South plantations. There's beautiful coastal beaches, and you can also access the Blue Ridge Mountains in South Carolina. Charleston is by far the largest city in the state, but our story today takes place around Columbia, the capital of South Carolina, which lies in what folks call the Midlands or the Piedmont. The Piedmont area has a pine forest. Um, much of the pine is used in the lumber industry, and there are rivers from the Piedmont that flow into the fall line, which drops down to the coastal plains. This fall line is pretty important for creating a lot of electricity, which has encouraged growth in the city's around, including Columbia. Oh, so there's like hydroelectric projects in those areas? And one of the reasons why I bring up the area itself, you know, just to talk a little bit about it, is because our story today, this is important, is talking about South Carolina's heat. It's hot. If anyone who's listening knows anything about South Carolina, you will know that there is extreme heat and subtropical humidity. I mean, there is a mugginess that, hangs in the air thick mugginess i'm gonna tell you it smacks you in the damn face when you get out of the car and in a city like columbia there's not a lot of shade 
It's like a concrete jungle. It is hot as fuck down there. I Man. mean, we're talking like 100 degree plus days. Yeah, I don't know what it is about there. I don't know if it's in some, a slot depression. 